Welcome back everybody to Super Mega Baseball 3 where this is going to be the biggest game of the series. The playoffs are only two games away for the Sharks and we're so close to clinching our spot. But nothing is guaranteed especially with the playoff race so close. We're only a half game up right now on the Chompers and have one more game against them. The winner of today's game likely will win the playoff spot with it. It's not a guarantee, but it's very likely. If we win today, and can also win our last game, we'll guarantee our playoff positioning. So welcome back everybody, it's about to get very intense today with Rhett Sheffield taking on Deshaun Short. Both pitchers have really good numbers, I think that they are two of the best for uh, these respective teams here. So do we have what it takes now to make it to the postseason here in season number one? We have grown a lot this year as a team. Demario Waddle didn't start too strong, but now he's one of our most important hitters. Boof Cobb began as a backup and now leads the team in batting average at 385. We have one of E-League's best home run hitters in Sylvester Seymour. And I think that our other players on offense have done a really good job finding a role, whether it's Hudson Lumen helping hit 13 doubles this year, or some of the big home runs we've had from Ollie Sparks and Neil Hope. Sonny Cooker was a great addition. Now let's see if we can punch our playoff ticket. Biggest game of the series right here. Let's go. Lumen's going to play, by the way. We need him. Casey Daniels is also going to play and start at shortstop. This is our second to last game of the season. The Chompers will actually play two more games after this one. So we control our own playoff fate right now. But of course we have to win to keep it that way. If we lose, I don't know that we're going to make it. Chompers will take the lead and have two more games to separate. Oh no! Blown by Boof Cobb. That is a strikeout to start the day. Deshaun Short, 61 strikeouts now on the season. Interested to see where, like, the league leaders end up in all these categories. We're going to find out very shortly. 1-2 and two now to Waddle. Off the plate, 2-2. Two and two. Full count now to power hitting to Mario Waddle, and that's strike three on the outside edge. Two strikeouts to start for Short. Seymour hits uh, an awkward soft line drive to Jamal Henderson. And hopefully we can get a big start today from Rhett Sheffield. He has put up solid numbers all season. We'll focus primarily on his fastball. And this is slicing foul away from Seymour. Let's go inside. I like that. On the ground, hit weakly to Seymour and quickly one away. Last episode, we got to see how strong this lineup can become. They had a really big late inning against us, had a few solo shots as well. Hopefully, we can limit that today. Keep the long ball from hurting us too much. That is past Sheffield, and Daniels makes the play near second base. And here's Bunt Lane, batting third despite lackluster numbers this season. I think one thing the game does need to do a little bit better is uh, like lineup order AI. There's a lot of good AI in this game, but I think uh, some rebalancing to how the CPU sets their own lineups is necessary. Broke the bat. That one's got to hurt. Bad pitch, drilled the right, Cooker looks up as this one travels and it's gone! That's one of the things here with Sheffield and even Parker, like, the accuracy is not uh, phenomenal, so occasionally I am going to uh, miss my spot. And if you miss over the plate, gonna be trouble. It is one nothing, Chompers. Ty Gonzalez leads off the Sharks half of the second. And hopefully we don't look at too many strikeouts. Whoa! Backing them way off the plate. Count 2-0. Alright, that's way upstairs. 3-0, we're taking, and that's a strike at the top of the zone. Full count now. 
barely got a piece of that one. Foul. Going the other way off the glove and past the second baseman. Oh, that's the perfect sequence to get Gonzalez aboard because he won't get too many infield singles on his own. Here is Neil Hope. Oh, that got away, and Gonzalez takes off for second base. Very nice. Let's get that run back. Way inside. We're making short throw a lot of pitches. Good pitch on the outside, two and two. That is on the ground. Gonzalez is caught now between second and third, and he's out. Was hoping maybe I could get him into a pickle there and hopefully at least get to second base with hope, but no shot. Ah, it's a line out. Go back. Wow, a double play. All right, I was really confident about that inning. And here we go to the bottom of the second now, hoping for a zero. Uh-oh, that one missed. They don't all get crushed, thankfully. And basically the same play we had for the second out of the first inning. Okay, that works for me. Morgan Scott. Counts already two and two. Missed again, and that is crushed to center. I don't know if we can contain this one either. Waddle! Oh, okay. Yeah, I think... Uh, Upgrading accuracy when you can is necessary here for pitchers. Like, as long as you can locate, you're in a good spot. But if you start missing these fastballs, you better be missing outside the zone. Popped up. Quickly two strikes now. Going for the strikeout. Can't get it there. Let's get some elevation on the slider. That's hit hard. And we're going home. Got him in a pickle here. Cannot mess this up. Oh my, I messed it up badly! Oh no, I threw it too late. I thought I was timing it up perfectly. Are you kidding me? In this game of all games to do that. I got like that Taekwon late in animation when I'm throwing in Madden where he's got to like wind up and... Oh man. I wanted to just end it there. I thought I had it timed. Going to second base here. And Sparks is out of position as a result. Covering the bag. It's going to be first and third with one down. Oh no. A late season collapse here for the Sharks. We've already lost a couple to this team. They're going for a sweep right now. Oh my. How do I not get that call? Full count now to Winston Wallace, the catcher. Oh, boy. Walked him. We are in a really bad situation right now. Sheffield's tense. Henderson can easily make this a huge lead for the Chompers. What do we do? That is hammered foul into the seats. I think I have to go away from some of the power pitches, though. It's just not really working. Can I get strikeouts without him? That's a big one for Sheffield. Here's Tedson now. No power pitches. Not now. Gotta make sure these are accurate. I cannot leave one over the plate with bad accuracy. Be nice to get a couple calls here. All right, two strikes. I'm going up top with the fastball once more. That's lifted, shallow right center. So it could be a lot worse. But we've got to get the runs going now. Ollie Sparks steps in. And that misses low. I can't check the bullpen from here. I'll do it in the bottom half. I want to see how good our uh, bullpen is for stamina today. That is hammered into left field, and Ollie Sparks delivers a leadoff single. 
Hudson Lumen now hitting 373 and got underneath this one and hit it to the deepest part of this park. Casey Daniels now batting ninth. Haven't seen him a whole lot recently. And that gets away from the catcher. Another wild pitch. Gotta capitalize. One away for Daniels. And that is on the ground. Whoa. I thought they were going to get uh, Sparks there, but did not go for the tag. Instead, at third base, Boof Cobb trying to bring home our first run. Cobb over to Tedson, and that ends the top of the third. Really got to get a zero here. On the ground, there we go. And we're going to need some uh, quicker at-bats too. I'm going to keep these mostly hittable in the zone for them and hope we can get weak contacts. Just hopefully stay accurate around the corners. That is the opposite of what I expected, and that is... Going to be extra bases for A.J. Ray. Lawrence Taverna now. As the Chompers try to score in the first three innings of the game. Lifted. Cobb makes the play. Morgan Scott at bat now. He's got good power against righties. Power pitch. First time in a little bit. Just cannot get any of these close ones to get swings. There we go. And now the change. Popped up. Should be playable. Back to the screen. Okay, I guess not. Full count to Morgan Scott. Weekly hit. Sheffield over to his right. Makes the play. There's our zero we were waiting on. Back to Demario Waddle now to lead off the fourth. And that ball up the middle. Stopped by Henderson. Wow. Full extension on the dive. He barely got to it. Here's Sylvester Seymour. Way inside again. If we can just get on base, we can probably get some more wild pitches, I think. Almost swung at that one. Now a 3-1 count. Very hittable. And blew it by him. Whoa. Oh, man. I missed two good ones there. Two away for Gonzalez. 43 pitches now for short. Missing low, and it's another 3-1 count. And that is upstairs. A walk drawn by Ty Gonzalez. And that brings up Neil Hope, who has the power to tie the game. Especially if we get something high. 2-0 to Hope. More missing here from short. 3-0. That found the inside corner. Ooh, I can't let that one go. I'm having some really bad at-bats here. Everything that's ended in a strikeout has been a terrible at-bat where I've missed a pitch to hit. His accuracy is making me hesitate on everything, even the good stuff. And he complements that with a 99 mile per hour fastball. So if I wait that extra split second, I'm going to miss. Sheffield misplays it and cannot get to first base. So if we have to go to the pen, Fitzpatrick, he's pretty good to go. Velez a little bit lower. Parker and Valdez are in good spots with their stamina. Want to get through, you know, hopefully at least five here with Sheffield. But we need some more zeros, some fast innings. He's already at 68 pitches. So we'll see. Good pitch. Fouled off. Away. High fastball. No. We'll go with the changeup then. Oh, I thought he caught it. All right. Another defensive blunder. I thought that was a line drive. All right. Runner at second base now, Winston Wallace. 
I believe he walked in his first trip, and now he's going to deliver into the gap, and that's past Waddle. I took a bad angle. What? I thought you were going to grab it, Cooker. I'm giving up so many extra bases. I have to hit like seven home runs to make up for this. They're probably going to score another run, too. Here's Henderson. I mean, this is like when the Braves gave up 10 runs in the first inning last year to the Cardinals. It's almost on that level. Somehow, we might keep this 3-0. Tedson at bat. Alright, we gotta get a swing and a miss. Popped up. That works just as well. This could be so much worse, but it could also be like 1-0 right now. That'd be phenomenal. Making mistakes pitching in the field, batting. Alright, Sonny Cooker, top five. Oh, man. One and one. Got a good pitch there and drilled it to lane. Ollie Sparks at bat. That ball is drilled to center, hit pretty high. But it's playable for Cade Wilson. Hudson Lumen already two down in the inning. 57 pitches for short. All right, a little in front of that one. And now a dribbler over to third base, and that's an infield single for Lumen. It's something. Casey Daniels trying to keep the two-out rally going. Strike at the knees. That one misses way high. Two strikes now to Casey. Up the middle. Diving stop by Henderson. And out at first by a half step. Three, four, five hitters do up here. And I think that's probably it here for Sheffield. I don't want to go further. We're going to go to Harry Fitzpatrick here. Usually I keep my starters in too long today. We're going to take out Sheffield and try to see the bullpen finish this game for us. Weekly hit. Daniels charges and he's going to be charged with an error. Oh, I had Boof Cobb playing short for most of the last few episodes he's playing in left field right now lifted I purposely pitched him high there to get something like this I feel if I just always attack these good hitters with pitches low they just know how to drive and find the gap get line drives sharp ground balls so sometimes you gotta pitch up Taverna hammers one. It's hooking foul off the brick. I want to switch my approach too with Fitzpatrick. Different strengths. That's hit sharply. Seymour. Sparks and Hope completes the double play. Great job by Fitzpatrick. Boof Cobb now leads off the sixth. Short will probably be able to go another inning or two. Base hit center field for Cobb. We need the long ball today. Demario Waddle at bat now. Almost swung at that one. Don't think I would have made great contact. Oh, I barely missed. Just a little too far underneath it. Sylvester Seymour at bat now. Way inside. That's into left field, and it's down. But, I mean, he had to freeze there. It looked like it was going to be caught. A lot of unlucky things are piling on top of bad play by myself. This is a lot. I have to get the long ball. That is a base hit into right field. Scorched. Two on, two down in the sixth for Neil Hope. A home run here. Resetting this game would be amazing. 
Missing high. Ooh, almost swung at it. And everybody's looking to move up. Oh, my. Well, now we got the base running blunders to put on top of it. He had to run after it. I thought we'd easily get there. Just having a terrible game. Oh my, I can't get a call. Expand the strike zone just a little bit. Right center down for extra bases. Can't get out of my own way and I can't get a break at all. Kate Wilson now. I'll get the call when it's time for strike one. But how about when I'm trying to... Oh my. Four nothing. Not getting any better. Can I get a ground ball? That does not count. Base hit left field. Chompers up four nothing. Don't appear to be done there. A bunt now from Wilson. And that's going to advance everybody. Back to the top of the order and Jamal Henderson. Do I want to go to Parker already? I don't. I can't believe I can't get those calls. Alright, Fitzpatrick. Two strikes. Can you get the big strike out here? I know you're not a high strikeout pitcher. Wow, he hit that one. Weekly Waddle charging. Got it! They're going to try going home now and get it. Oh, man. Five nothing chompers. Oh, boy. Seven nothing. Yeah, this is just the worst game I'll probably play in this entire game. Let's skip ahead here to the seventh. Seven nothing now. Short still in the ball game, and we don't have a run. Two and zero oh here to hope. All right, a three zero -oh count at least, and he'll draw a four pitch walk to lead off the inning. We've got to get a couple. Here's Sonny Cooker. That is through the middle. Base hit. The short. Look to come out of the game now. Not yet. Ollie Sparks now at bat. Hitting into a triple play here would make a lot of sense today. With how this game is gone. Oh, he found the inside there. 2-1 to Sparks. 3-1. and one. Right down the middle. Count runs full. Lifted into center field. One away. Here comes Trent Wilkinson. Really good stats. He's a lefty. Hudson Lumen. Wow, he just knows how to hit it through the infield. All right, base is juiced. Casey Daniels, it's kind of now or never. We'll keep Casey out there batting righty. And he pulls this one. It is foul by inches. Come on. This one's a line out and a double play. Oh, man. What do I got to do? Two strikes here to AJ Ray with Tanner Parker on the mound. And that is in the right base hit. That one's also getting through. It's seven nothing, but that seems temporary. Wow, I didn't even know AJ Ray was going to third base there. That got away, and Ray now caught between third and home. He's safe, of course. Oh man, I got a break. Strike three, looking. 
Popped up. Should be playable. Lumen. He dropped the ball. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. What's next? You got any more for me? I know I'm not getting two here. It's 8 nothing, Chompers. Come on. Inside the park home run. Hit for the cycle. Like, there's so much more you can do. 10 nothing, Chompers. Top of the eighth, 10 nothing. What happened today? Played a horrible game. Just the perfect storm here. I didn't play well. I had issues with every aspect of the game. They capitalized on so many mistakes. And then we did also get unlucky at the same time. So is this it for year one? Have we basically seen us blow a chance to go to the postseason? Sylvester Seymour is going to hustle in with a double. Ty Gonzalez now at bat. Tried to turn on that one a bit early. How about again? Right at AJ Ray. We will have one game after this. And the Chompers, of course, will have a couple themselves. And we will have an idea. Nice catch, Boof Cobb. We'll have an idea of what uh, the last game of the season means for us. I imagine I will play that episode. But I'm hoping it means something. Hopefully a shot to go to the postseason still. Although I think being swept here against the Chompers will seal our fate. Just cannot get anything right. That's going to bring home another run. 11-0. Sonny Cooker turns on one here in the ninth. And A.J. Ray takes away a homer. Great catch by A.J. Ray. Saw plenty of those in the Raiders franchise. We can't even get one run. I'm telling you, Ollie Sparks is not hitting a solo homer right now. Oh, wait. The other way hit deep. We will not be shut out today. Good job, Sparks. Hudson Lumen. That's going to end the game. 11-1. to Chompers win. They complete the sweep. And now take over the fourth seed in the conference. Just a mess of a game. Cannot wait to edit that one. We also have the Narwhals in front of us. That could also fall out of playoff positioning. And certainly this loss will help us out. We have identical records now. So perhaps we're not even competing with the Chompers at this stage. They do defeat the Warhawks. And I think they're going to be in the playoffs. Chompers and Warhawks again? Alright, their winning streak is snapped. Narwhals and Raptors here. Big one. Raptors cannot pull off the comeback. And they go to 24 and 24. Alright, we could end up with a huge tie here for the postseason. Here are the standings. We are 23 and 24. Same record as the Cobras, while the Chompers and Narwhals ended their seasons with equal records. I don't know the tiebreakers here for sure, but I'm wondering if run differential is the main one. I think that we might be knocked out of the postseason right now entirely. What do you say we do a mega episode today? Let's just get into this last one here. Maybe I'll skip some of the innings or something, but... I'm not sure this needs to be its own episode. I think that we're out of the postseason anyway. So let's just wrap it all up. It's the season finale today. And William Lindsley takes the mound here against the Foxes. A team that maybe we saw once or twice. Charlie Woodard is leading off. And he's going to pick up where the Chompers left off against us. Madeline Payne, all right. Base hit that would have been an out if the runner didn't go to second base, and now it's first and third, nobody down. 
Did someone mess with my ego setting? Early opportunity here for Kalen Guerra. Somehow I got away with that pitch. Whoa. If you're going to miss, miss out there. Why did my console just turn off? The aim was not okay. Three run home run. Foxes. Three nothing. Are you serious? I just can't get an out. I haven't thrown that pitch in that location all day. Two run shot for the Foxes. Well, that one's also going to be traveling way out. It's a souvenir ball in the third of the inning. Six nothing foxes. Is this one also leaving? All right. You know what? I think I'm simming to the end. This is just too much. I, I kind of wanted to hit though at least once. But I don't know if this inning's ever going to end if I just keep playing. Hey, there we go. That's the end of the Foxes' first inning. I'm going to hit for at least one inning today. I want to get a couple runs. Boof Cobb drives one! That's it well, right center. Caught by Lauren Marshall. With Waddle standing on first after a walk, here is Sylvester Seymour. That was a line drive. That didn't hit the ground. Yeah, I'm okay with this one being done. So who else thinks we have to work on upgrading our uh, pitching in the offseason? What a way to end the year. Let's recap. We lost our last four games, five of our last six. And in those four games, we allowed, are you kidding me? 31 runs and scored seven. The season is now over. Oh wow, that was the last place Foxes too, who won 11 to one against us. No more games and the playoffs are about to begin, but hey, we've got to go and look at stats just like we do in the Buccaneers series so starting with our team I know we've gone through this recently Boof Cobb ends up with a 377 average we can actually do some sorting now so most hits Seymour had 58 16 of those went over the fence Demario Waddle hit 11 Gonzalez 8 Sparks 7 Hope 6 Cooker 4 and a couple more down the board Seymour had 48 RBIs, somehow could not get to 50 with how bad our end of the year was. We had a few players bat above 300. Like our offense was overall pretty solid. But I think we have to look at maybe making some moves and sacrificing some offense so we can get our pitching a lot better. Let's take a look. Any other interesting uh, stats here? At bat per home run. Sparks hit one every 21 at bat. Seymour every 11. For the pitching, obviously we have a lot of work to do there. Madrano ends up with a 379 ERA. So once I wasn't pitching with him, it seems his numbers got pretty good. Tyrus Sparks, 410. Maybe that's in the threes if I didn't pitch with him for like half of his starts. The bullpen was inconsistent, but I like Parker, Velez, and Valdez. Not sure we're going to keep Harry Fitzpatrick Jr. next season. We may have to make some moves there. We'll have to see. Oh, let's see here. Home runs allowed. 17 for Lindsley in 60 innings. That's quite a bit. That's between two and three per nine innings, which is not very good. For K rate, Dino Madrano, 6.9. Sheffield, 
For the league leaders, the batting title goes to Tatum Longboat, who couldn't have had that many at-bats. Tatum Longboat played in 13 games and had 57 at-bats. So, why is Boof Cobb not qualified to be second in batting average? And if Cobb's missing, who else could be missing from that stat? Might be a bug there they have to fix. Sylvester Seymour led the league in both home runs and runs batted in. Very solid numbers across the board. Could have been better without the uh, slump late in the year. For slugging, he also placed in the top six. For extra base hits, he had 25. 38 runs scored for Demario Waddle along with Corin Haggerty. Two cornerbacks finishing at the top. Perry Cummings, 20 stolen bases. Very nice. For pitching, ERA, number one. Akio Tatsumi from the Razors. Quinton Little, 1.3. Rowan Barton, Jet Mashington, and Cole Hartman, all sub two. Andres Valdez saved 11 games. Jet Mashington had eight victories on the year. Here are the top uh, batting average and strikeout numbers. Really good year for Cole Hartman. That's better than any year I had with him in the Chargers series. 78 strikeouts, by the way, for Brady Myers. And walk rate, strikeout rate. That completes the stats. Hey, Dino Madrano at least got some development here at the very end. He got plus one junk. Sylvester Seymour, minus seven speed. Wait a minute, Sonny Cooker, minus four contact. I just got the lucky plus 14 roll last episode. He's 25 and he's regressing? All right, everybody, let's go to the postseason and we are not there. We missed the playoffs. And let's start simulating these CPU games then. The Chompers finish so hot. They win their first game over the B-Wolves. Now these are all best of five series. The Raptors score a first victory, and the Freeze do as well. So, the Narwhals pulled off one upset, and they're going up two games to none over the one seed two cans. Prowl will score a victory to even that series. The Freeze win another one to go up 2-0. And the Chompers, they win. Now a 2-1 series. Two cans. Narrowly avoid the sweep. And the Raptors take advantage here in that series. 2-1. Freeze do sweep the Dragons. And the Chompers will be advancing to the second round. Narwhals win. Two cans knocked out of the postseason. Two upsets so far in the West. And then the favorites win in the East. Narwhals score a win. And the Freeze come from behind, pull away, and hang on for the first victory. Oh, and Extras, Chompers, even the series there. Freeze are moving on. Chompers, 6 nothing decisive win. The Freeze have swept their first two opponents. And now, the Chompers join them. Can I, uh, do I have to sim them all? Oh, I do. I thought maybe I could watch, perhaps, the last game of the series. The Chompers went all the way. They are the champs. What a journey for them. They had to sweep us. They did. And then, they just run through the postseason. Go 9-3. And they win the first title here in this series. That means next episode we have an offseason. My very first offseason in the series. I have not had an offseason yet that I had to take seriously. But it should be a lot of fun to see what I'm able to do with this team. I know we're going to see some players opt out of their contracts. And we'll have some tough decisions to make. But who would you say are the most important players to make sure we're building around for the future? 
For me, obviously, I look at Demario Waddle on offense, Ty Gonzalez, Sylvester Seymour, I hope, sticks around. I'd also like to keep Tyrus Sparks, but I imagine he will test and will become a lot tougher to keep around. So, where are we saying, okay, maybe we can handle losing this player so this position gets stronger, or so this star remains on the team? I think Sparks and Seymour need to stay around. And then from there, maybe we end up losing somebody like Neil Hope if he tests. We'll have to see. But I can't wait to construct this roster for year two here on Super Mega Baseball 3. Thank you all for your support. I know this episode is not at all what anybody expected. But it shows that we got some rebuilding to do. And we've got to make sure we fix this pitching staff next year. That'll be it for today, everybody. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all next time. Have a great day.